Here we are on lesson three of uh, the Amateur Radio Foundation license. Uh, this evening we're going to be looking at transmitters and receivers. So once the presentation caches up, Right, so this evening we're going to be looking at uh, modulation types and waveforms, uh, sidebands, block diagrams, uh, which is um, the different sections of radios and how they fit together. Uh, we're going to look at some software defined radios and we're going to look at how to set up a station. So we'll start off with uh, RF signals. RF stands for radio frequency. Uh, a radio transmitter is used to send information from one place to another using electromagnetic radiation. <clears throat> a transmitter creates an RF carrier wave on the frequency required, or the required frequency, uh, and mixes the information to be transmitted. Uh, and the result of this is modulation. So uh, when a radio, when you press the key on a radio or the button on the, the mic, you will end up with uh, transmitting a carrier wave. When you speak into the mic, you uh, mit, or the radio will mix the audio from you talking to the carrier wave, uh, creating a modulated wave. So there are um, several different types of modulation. Uh, the first two we're going to look at is AM and FM. Now, these are uh, fairly commonly used in uh, commercial radio. So you'll have uh, the AM stations and the FM stations. Uh, and the, the way they work is, uh, I have mentioned this before in the previous lesson, the uh, amplitude modulation changes the uh, the distance, if, if you were to draw a line straight through the middle of this waveform here, your, um, the amplitude is from the centre line to the top of a peak and the bottom of a trough. And so the amplitude changes uh, with the, the audio that's mixed in. There'll be a demonstration of that in a moment. Uh, frequency modulation changes the, uh, the actual frequency that you're operating on ever so minutely, um, but enough to actually carry information. So as you can see, here we have our audio signal, and then we have our RF carrier. And to mix it into an AM signal, you'll notice that where there's a high peak on the, the audio signal, we have a much larger amplitude in the wave down here. Where we have a low trough, we have a smaller amplitude in the wave. With frequency modulation, it's, it's very similar. Um, with, where you've got the audio signal, where you've got a high peak in the audio signal, you have a higher frequency than in the, in the low troughs, you have a lower frequency. <clears throat> so that, that, that's the difference between amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. And here we can see the difference once again. Uh, so you, with the, the high peaks, you have um, a higher amplitude and a, uh, a higher frequency than you do in the low troughs. Okay, with Morse and data, uh, so I, I have mentioned again before, when you're transmitting in Morse code, you either have the transmitter turned on or off. So when the transmitter is on, when you press the key down, uh, you will get a peak in the waveguide and it's just straight up and down. And the longer that is depends, or the, the length of that peak depends on whether it's a dit or a dar. Uh, so you will notice that when this audio is mixed in with the waveform, you get 
uh, periods of transmission of frequency, and then you get periods of nothing. Frequency, nothing. And the longer that is, or the length of that, um, that frequency, or the, the amount of RF there, um, depends on whether it's a DIT or a DAR. Data, uh, audio tones, that data is normally transmitted through a series of audio tones, um, usually multiple simultaneous tones, uh, and they're generated by an audio interface, normally a computer sound card. Okay, we're going to move on to looking at sidebands. So, sidebands are a are part of an AM signal, an amplitude modulation signal. Um, whenever you produce an AM signal, it results in sidebands. So, uh, just now, if we go back a few slides to the AM one, we're actually looking at the wave here from side on. Whereas now, when we get to it, we're now looking straight down the wave. Um, and you can see the carrier is in front of you there. And on each side of the car car carrier, you have two sidebands, a lower sideband and an upper sideband. Um, <clears throat> and these are signals adjacent to the carrier, the next two. Um, as the information in the upper and lower sidebands is the same, you can transmit just one of them, and that is referred to as single sideband. Um, this allows you to get better results because you can thrust all your power uh, that you're transmitting behind one of those sidebands rather than both of them. So it does allow the signal to go further than uh, an AM or an FM signal, certainly more than an FM signal. Um, in, so instead of transmitting the two sidebands, you'll get better results using all your transmit power for just one, either lower or upper sideband. For single sideband operation, please note um, that lower sideband operation normally occurs below 10 megahertz, and anything above 10 megahertz is normally upper sideband. There are a few exceptions to this. Um, so for instance, on the five megahertz band, uh, which is shared with uh, the military, um, we tend to use upper sideband, uh, although it is below 10 megahertz. Um, not something you need to overly worry about because uh, the five megahertz band is only actually available to full license holders. Uh, you can't use it as a foundational licensee or an intermediate licensee um, unless you're operating through a club station with a club call sign and a full call sign holder present. Um, but that, so that, that it, it's just an example to show that it's not uh, anything more than really a, um, a sign of courtesy to say that this is the rule we follow. Okay, we're gonna move on to looking at transmitters. So, <clears throat> a radio transmitter has uh, four basic stages. It has an audio stage, um, and this uh, takes the audio that we put into the radio, be it from a microphone or Morse key or a, um, a computer, and it amplifies any weak signals from that input. Um, we, it then goes into a frequency generator, okay, and that creates the, sorry, it doesn't go into a frequency generator. There is a frequency generator that generates uh, the carrier signal at the correct frequency. So when you set your dial on the radio to, for instance, 145 megahertz, uh, you're actually setting that frequency in the frequency generator. You then have a modulator. So the audio stage and the frequency generate or the frequency that has been generated meets in the modulator. And uh, the modulator mixes the radio signal and the audio signal together. And that's where you, you create your AM, FM, SSB signals. 
Uh, after that, it all then goes into the RF power amplifier. This increases the combined signal and it then feeds it into the antenna. So let's have a look at this in a visual sense. So we have our microphone here, um, or our audio input, and that goes into the, micro the amplifier, the audio stage. Um, oh, so that goes into the audio stage. Uh, then the signal comes into the modulator, and at the same time, from this stage here, which is the oscillator, or the frequency generator, that goes. That signal also goes in to the modulator. That is where the two signals are mixed. The audio signal and the radio frequency signal are mixed, and that's where your modulation happens of the uh, wave. And then it goes into the RF amplifier at stage four, which chucks it out of the antenna. You may be asked a question on this block diagram in your exam. What they may do is they may issue this diagram here uh, and ask you what stage four is and what it does. And you'll have some options to choose from. Okay. So this is an AM transmitter block diagram. It's exactly the same as the previous one, only it's showing you what's happening. This is an audio uh, wave. Okay, and down here we have our carry, carrier signal being generated. The modulator has modulated it into the AM wave. It has then, the wave has, or the power behind the wave has been increased. So you can see that this pattern is much bigger than this pattern. It's because there's more power being generated. And that stage then chucks out the antenna. Okay. So transmitter operation. Uh, if the oscillator is not set up correctly, you may accidentally transmit outside the amateur band and cause interference. You must make sure that the RF oscillator or the dial on your radio is set to the correct frequency. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you start transmitting outside an, an amateur band, you could end up causing interference to uh, uh, someone else operating on an adjacent band. Uh, which is illegal. The RF power amplifier must be connected to a matched antenna uh, or it may cause um, damage to the transmitter. We will be looking at this in our uh, uh, antenna matching in our antenna module, okay, but I will also be referencing it a little bit throughout this presentation as well. Excessive amplitude modulation causes audio distortion and interference with adjacent channels. What we mean by excessive amplitude modulation is, shall we say, shouting down the microphone? Having your uh, mic gain too loud can do, have the same job. Um, if, you, if you don't set your mic gain uh, correctly, you will over um, deviate on your uh, amplitude modulation you'll also um, can create excessive frequency deviation uh, on FM mode. So make sure you set the mic gain correctly. If you're using a data mode, check the audio levels from your computer are not too loud uh, because that, that will have the same effect. Okay. So from the license conditions module, which we haven't actually looked at yet, um, at Foundation, you can only use commercially available transmitters and kits that comply with Ofcom requirements. Uh, so there, there, are no, there are a lot of transmitters out that comply with Ofcom uh, requirements. Um, and there are some kits out there that you can buy and build the rig yourself um, from the kit that with the instructions and everything that is supplied that also comply with Ofcom requirements. Be careful with what you get if you're going to buy a kit because there are a lot of kits out there that don't comply with Ofcom requirements. You must only transmit on allocated frequencies and you must not exceed the permitted power levels. 
You must stay in band and not cause interference. And you must test your transmitters from time to time. Okay, so next we're going to be looking at receivers. Um, a radio receiver recovers information sent from one place to another using electromagnetic radiation. The process of recovering the audio information from a modulated RF radio signal is called demodulation. Uh, beneath we have uh, an FM signal. We can tell it's an FM signal because the frequency is changing as we go through the wave. So receiver basics. Uh, a res radio receiver has three basic stages. It has a tuning and RF amplifier. Uh, this tunes to the required frequent frequency and amplifies the weak signal so that can, it can be used. Uh, we have a demodulator, also known as a, as a detector, that extracts the audio from the radio signal and is often called demodulation. There are different types of detector for each modulation type. We, all, we then have an audio amplifier. This amplifies the audio and feeds it to a loudspeaker or into headphones. So let's have a look at that. So the antenna here will receive your signal and the signal will then go in to the tuning and RF amplifier. Um, the signal will then come through into the demodulator, also referred to as a detector. That will um, detect your audio signal and then send the audio signal to stage three, which is the audio amplifier. That will then uh, increase the, the volume or the, um, of the audio and then it will then chuck it out the speaker or headphones to you. Again, this will come up in your exam and you will be asked, or you may be asked what each box does or they may say, what does box two do? Okay, you need to know more than that it's box two. Uh, you need to know that that is the demodulator and what the demodulator does. Okay, so here we have an FM receiver block diagram. So the FM signal is received by the antenna. It comes into the tuning and RF amplifier, okay, to increase it. It then comes into the detector that detects the audio within this signal, which then feeds it into the audio amplifier, which increases the audio and then throws it out the speaker. Okay, next we're gonna go into software defined radios. Software-defined radios, also known as SDRs, are becoming more and more popular. Uh, they range from low-budget receivers that can plug into a computer USB port, and that they tend to only be receivers, um, and they come to large, expensive desktop, des desktop transceivers. I apologise, I'm tripping over my words this evening. Um, you can see one just here. They look very often like a, a standard radio, um, but they do work very differently. SDRs receive electromagnetic signals from the antenna and digitize the signals for processing within software and not hardware. So with um, a, 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 an analog radio, it will, um, the, the, the signal will be decoded using uh, electrical circuits. Whereas in an SDR, it will be decoded within software. Um, and it, it can make quite a big difference at times. So an SDR receiver, you have the, um, a stage called A and D, which is analog to digital. Um, so when the, the signal comes in through the antenna, it comes in as an analog signal um, and uh, this section here will, will change it into a digital signal so that the software within the digital processor um, can decode it. It will then go into from a digital to analog stage to convert it back to audio, or sorry, a digital to audio stage that will then throw it out the speaker. Okay, so, oh, sorry, digital to analog. That will then throw it out the speaker. 
all demodulation is carried out within software, not hardware. A transmitter works uh, similar, but again in reverse. Um, so you will have your, your input here. It will get to convert it from analog to digital, go through a digital processor, okay? Um, and that is where the, the, modulator, the modulating all happens as well. It will then be converted back into an analog signal before going through a power amplifier and then being thrown out of the antenna. Okay, this stage is meant to be a practical station setup. Um, We obviously can't do that practically because uh, of the situation we're in, but we have got a, a picture and a description of what a station should be set up as. This is for an HF station setup. Okay, uh, and normally there would be a practical, but we will run through exactly what's going on. So we start off here, we have a 12 volt power supply, um, which actually is 30, should be 13.8 volts. Um, you must make sure that your power supply is up to the job of running the rig that you choose to run off it. Um, next we have the transceiver, which is both a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, and into that we will have some form of input, i.e. a microphone, a Morse key or a data interface from a computer. Coming out of that we have an RF filter. Now very often nowadays you'll find these are actually built into the rig. Um, you can get external ones, but very often you'll find they're built in so that you can switch them on and off with ease. Through that, this is all um, linking to the antenna now, but through that it goes into an SDR meter, okay? Not an SDR meter. What am I talking about? And an SWR meter, my apologies. Um, so that you've got an SWR meter there, and that then goes into an, uh, what they've called here an AMU, or an antenna matching unit. You will often find these are called ATUs. In fact, that's the most common abbreviation for antenna tuning unit. Uh, that is an incorrect title. They do actually, they match um, the, the signal to the, or the antenna to the signal electronically rather than um, tune it. But, uh, so that, that's why they've called them an antenna matching unit here. But they, they are, known as antenna tuning units. And then you have an antenna. Uh, this particular antenna here, um, I mean, they've called this an HF station setup. I would suggest that this antenna is not suitable for working on high frequency. You know, I would suggest it's far too short. Um, but just a quick overview of what this all does then. So obviously the power supply unit uh, supplies the radio with 13.8 volt DC power. Okay, you will get, or you can also get some radios that have a straight into AC connection. That means this is part of the radio. Um, you then have a filter. This filters noise out of the signal. Okay, you have a the the SWR meter. Uh, SWR stands for standing wave ratio and we will be covering exactly what that is in a later um, presentation um, but very often you will also find that this is also part of the antenna tuning unit or antenna matching unit um, because the job of this is to match electronically match the length of the antenna to the frequency that you're on and then you have the antenna and that is your your probably the most important piece of kit that is um part of this setup if you don't have the correct antenna you're not going to do very well okay if you can make the, get the best antenna you can you're going to have a much better time operating radio okay so we'll go over the summary now um We've been through the block diagrams. Uh, you need to remember the diagrams for the transmitters and receivers. Don't just learn the numbers, learn the meanings of each stage within the block diagrams and what they do. We've 
learned how to recognize amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. And we have looked at single sideband uh, in terms of lower sideband and upper sideband. And we've looked at software defined radios and how they do the processing within the software. Remember, never transmit out of band. Always make sure you've got your dial set correctly. And watch your audio levels. Don't over modulate or over deviate. 